Hey Cats fans and welcome to another episode of Tweets of the Week after a nice win from the Catters against the Pies on the weekend and our first tweet is from Dave the Engineer uh, and Dave says I was afraid that Stengel might be a downhill skier after round one and then round two but his last quarter was pivotal. Um, yeah Dave I thought uh, I was thinking the same thing about Stengel actually I, I did think he had a quite uh, handy service uh, in the in the round one against the Bombers and was the beneficiary of a couple of nice goals there. Um, and then in round two, when he was barely sighted and just had no impact on the game whatsoever and um, skills were a bit off like the rest of the team, I suppose, uh, I just thought, oh, you know, is this a bit of a... Has he sort of conned us a little bit here or have we got all bought into the hype, I guess, um, as you can do with a round one win? Um, but good to see, uh, and I probably should also say he was a little, I, I had those thoughts still probably for the first half and, and part of the third quarter, a lot of the third, third quarter actually. Um, but in that fourth quarter, he really turned it around and he was pivotal. I think they mu- must have brought him up the ground a little bit more. He seemed to get a lot of ball, um, through the midfield, uh, in the forward half of the ground still, but, um, he, he seemed to be a really handy link up player um, and uh, was uh, moving the ball quickly he's on the on the on the end of a lot of things and was setting up a lot of the play so it was great to see him getting a stack of it um, so let's hope round four against the uh, uh, Lions he continues on with that thanks Dave our next tweets from Ron Welsh and Ron says brilliant comeback win from the Geelong Cats a great game to watch and another example of Australian rules football being the most exciting game on the planet go Cats. Uh, wasn't it a great game? Uh, I guess if you're at different stages of the game, depending on which side you're supporting, you probably didn't think it was. Um, but for the neutrals out there, I'm sure it was a fantastic uh, spectacle. Um, so yeah, third quarter for us, pretty horrible to watch, but you had to appreciate the way Collingwood was going about it and the, the pressure and intensity around the ball. And we just couldn't, we had no oxygen. Uh, so hats off to Collingwood for that n- uh, nine-goal quarter. Um, but then we brought it home uh, in the end in the, the theatre and the, the script. Well, there's no scripts in footy, but uh, it was Selwood's big game and, and we, we found a way to win for him. Uh, a few of the younger guys stood up. Uh, a few of the older guys stood up. Uh, where, was, where was it? We're all asking like that. And a few of us probably uh, left the ground a bit early. And um, not me. Uh, but a few of us probably left the ground early and uh, turned the telly off or watched something else yeah but um, yeah for those that hung around and kept watching they got the reward didn't they so thanks for that ron uh good good tweet there uh our next tweet is from dr daniel s garcia and the doctor says statement win from joel but that's also the kind of football that wins finals uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, it's just that hard, you know, it doesn't have to look pretty all the time. You just do the little things. You put your body over the ball. You do what's necessary uh, to get the ball onto a teammate and to support and run with each other, run for each other. Um, it's what you want to see. Whether we can continue that uh, for the next, how many, what, 19 rounds and finals and uh, quarter after quarter, uh, it's interesting. Clearly, the Collingwood style of play last night, that high-octane footy that they bring, their new style, that didn't seem to last the whole game. Um, but, yeah, I heard a commentator saying all night long it was a, it was a finals-type atmosphere. Um, crowd seemed to be really into it, um, so it was great. It was great to, um, yeah, uh, see that style of footy being played and that, uh, yeah, finals footy's great, isn't it? And uh, it's, it's a shame it's about four months away still. Um, can't we just fast forward and get there again? Uh, anyway, thanks, thanks, Dr. Daniel. The next tweet's from Derek Francis, who's big pumped after the win, and he says, Friday night at GMHBA is going to go off. Uh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, especially, I don't think we've, I don't think Brisbane's won at uh, Kidney Park or GMHBA for the last 13 uh, shots at it. So um, they're a great team and all. Uh, I'm pretty sure they've come close to us a few times, but, yeah, haven't had much luck there for a little while. So um, you'd be a brave person to tip against the Cats, um, even though Brisbane's probably top of the ladder at the moment after three straight wins. Um, Yeah, until they actually win there, uh, I don't think I'd be picking Brisbane no matter how well they're going. Um, Third in a row at that ground's pretty horrible, so... 
Um, hopefully we can get uh, a big crowd there. Still a reduced capacity, of course, but if you've got the means to and uh, and you can get to the game, um, be great to see you there. Be fantastic and yeah, two great two great teams going head to toe, head head, uh, head on at each other. Um, should be fantastic. So thanks, Derek. All right, uh, our next is from Miles Fitzner. And Miles says, it's been a pleasure supporting the Cats over my 33 years. Funny thing is at three-quarter time, you always knew there was a chance. Uh, You're more optimistic than me. I like to think I'm reasonably optimistic, but I'd pretty much given up in the third quarter. And I I just resorted to sort of um, watching how Collingwood was going about it at that point. Normally, I've got one eye, uh, both eyes on the Cats, but I thought, oh, I'll see what Collingwood's doing and... Um, try and try and get a feel for their style, um, but then somehow we turned it around. And we got a, a, a late goal there in the third, and in the end of the third, and then it just kicked on. I just thought, oh, we got within three goals. I thought, oh, here we go, bit of a sniff, um, and then we drew drew level. And I thought, oh, that's great. But in these situations, once that happens, the other team just goes bang, 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 and three goals and game over again. But uh, that wasn't to be. And, Ended up winning by a couple of goals and some change. So oh, I couldn't believe it. Absolutely couldn't believe it. Um, anyway, th- thanks, Miles. That's great. Uh, now, Mel says, gee, there are some so-called G- Geelong F- yeah, football club fans that really showed their true colours and a lack of knowledge or dedication to the club. I'm sure their delete button will be running hot. Just plain embarrassing. Yeah, um, there was a lot of a lot of fun comment, well, fun comment on Twitter uh, about how crap Geelong was and how crap some of the players were and change this, change that. Um, it's, it is it is funny when you um, uh, get it uh, all back to front and uh, you get a bit of egg on your face at the end, but uh, that, that can happen. Um, anyway, uh, I guess, yeah, hit the delete button uh, put, or put your hand up and say, I got it wrong. Um, anyway, thanks, Mel. That's a good one. All right, who's next? Who have we got? We've got... Jacob. Jacob says, Brad Close, have my babies. Uh, yeah, well, I think I think everyone wants Brad Close to have their babies at the moment. He's probably the most popular, one of the most popular cats, oh, apart from Selwood last night, of course, but uh, he's quickly becoming uh, a lot of people's uh, top three Geelong players. He's a, he's a fantastic, he's a fantastic player and he doesn't waste much, does he? He does a lot. He gets his 15 to 18 touches a game and one or two goals. Um, so yeah, we just love we just love the way Brad goes about it, um, and looking forward to another big game from Brad. Um, you know, it's a little bit quiet in the first half. Brad was, if we're being honest, um, but he, he he found his way into the game in that second half, and was quite um, pivotal in that fourth quarter as well. So thanks, Jacob. Uh, all right, Paul Marinelli says, uh, I've got to laugh out of this one. This is my favourite tweet of the week, actually. Paul says, I'm nude in the lounge room with a bottle of red going nuts. Up the pussycats. I think that was maybe just after the after the win or during the during the massive comeback. So lots of imagery there, Paul. Thanks for that. Um, hope you enjoyed the red. I uh, hope you didn't spill too much uh, on the couch or over yourself or <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, hope it sounds like you had a great time anyway. Uh, good to see you having a lot of fun. So thanks a lot. Uh, now, RB... Um, I'll be at RB82 underscore says, oh, this is a Will Smith thing. Keep Selwood's name out of your effing mouth, uh, which is probably a reference to a lot of the Collingwood cheer squad that were, not cheer squad, the Collingwood fans uh, and possibly even some of the Collingwood players. I don't know if they were giving him a hard time too. Uh, it's a competitive game. They'll, they'll probably just you know do what they needed to do. Uh, but the Collingwood, Collingwood fans were booing him the whole night. Uh, yeah, he gave away a, a high free kick and um, probably... Gave him a little bit more to go on with as well, but um, maybe show a little bit of respect for the guy. Um, 336 games, 227 games as captain, uh, 150 wins, I think, as captain. Um, yeah, maybe maybe show a little bit of class, Collingwood. I'm, I think you're better than that. Anyway. All right, who else we got? We got any more? Uh, Claire Kearns uh, says, the texting from a Pies fan started 10 minutes in and stopped suddenly with about two minutes before the end. Uh, so I'm sh- I think she's referring to maybe a friend or, or a Collingwood supporter friend. Uh, yeah, just wouldn't wouldn't let up the whole night. And then suddenly their phone must have gone flat. Too much texting maybe, maybe Claire, um, throughout the night. Just uh, ran out of battery on their phone. So it's a, that can happen when you overdo 
I would do the texting through the night, but uh, they're quite funny there, isn't it? They all go a little bit quiet. I remember being at, a, I think, that game, the Hawthorne-Geelong game, oh, 10 years ago now, it must have been, when Jimmy Bartell kicked the, uh, the, the point, uh, and all these Hawthorne supporters were giving it to me the whole game, uh, and then, yeah, hit the front, and they walked off um, before I'd even realised. Just as, I think Jimmy took the mark, and they'd started walking, uh, so that was quite funny. I think that's. I think that might be all our tweets for the week. So thanks, everyone. Uh, there was. It was actually quite a few, but I'm trying to keep it to about ten uh, tweets for the week. Uh, so I appreciate your engagement with the show. Keep keep the tweets coming through on game day, and I'll do my best to um, give you a shout out if I can. Um, if I didn't call your tweets out this week, just try again next week, and I'm sure I'll get around to you eventually. Um, and yeah, I'll try to. I usually will go with the funnier ones um, or the ones that. Uh, if there's a bit of a common theme, I'll, I'll probably pick the better one. So, um, yeah, anyway, I really appreciate it. And uh, onwards and upwards to next week against the Lions. Cheers. Take care.